Hi everyone, uh, welcome back to PCTV. I'm Jared. And I'm Nizar. And today uh, we've got a few things to look at. Yep. What are we looking at first? Well, we'll be looking at Windows 8. We've sort of neglected Windows 8 as the new operating system from Microsoft, but if you're buying a device nowadays, it's pretty much guaranteed you're going to have a Windows 8 operating option. system. Yeah, you'll have the option there. There's Android, iOS, and now Windows is actually picking up. Yeah. Yeah. Sort of picking up the slack and um, starting to use touch gestures and starting to use a completely different interface called the Metro interface. And we'll go through all of that and show you how to get around it and what's new and what's not and how to navigate that new operating system. Yeah. Hi. What we're going to look at today is Windows 8.1. Yeah. Windows 8.1 on a Microsoft Surface, their uh, sort of flagship tablet thing. Yeah, we figured that we have to show you Windows 8.1 since it is the current operating system that Microsoft is offering. And we wanted to show you a couple of the fundamental differences between Windows 7 and Windows 8. One of them being the fact that you have a Metro desktop. Yeah, they're called the Metro. Yeah, which is a completely different desktop to what you're used to in Windows 7. And also we'll show you that Windows 8 is the first operating system that Microsoft has offered which allows you to have touch gestures. Yeah, so I guess it's up against the iPads and uh, the Android tablets. Yep. And uh, yeah, this is pretty much a full computer. It just comes as a slate size. Yeah, well it gives you the, the ability to take off and just use it as a tablet or you can have a keyboard attached. That's right, so we've set one up here and uh, we have a keyboard attached to it, but we'll, we'll take it apart later and have a look. So just to log on, we, we just sort of do a little gesture. All right, was that a swipe from the bottom left? Yeah, I think you could probably just tap the screen there. It's, it's just a, a home screen. Yeah. But uh, so we can sign in as we've created an account here called PCTV. Let's sign in. All right, so we tap on that one and uh, I'll put in our password here. Like a complex password. <laughs> well, we've got to follow our own advice, I guess. That's really good. All right, so this is the Metro desktop. Yes. And as you can see, it's got what's called live tiles. Each one of those little square boxes is actually a tile. That's right. And each one of these tiles is a live tile in terms that they move, as you saw that. They yeah. move and they are functional. Yeah, so these are connected to the internet and they're just giving you little updates, you know. So it goes around here, news sites, uh, the weather is updated. So if we tap on that one. It'll go into the weather application. Yep. Okay, so wants to use my location. Let's just say no for now. And we'll just cancel. Oh, okay, so it can't find me. So we'll type in Adelaide. Uh, Adelaide, South Australia. There we go. And what a lovely day it is today. Yeah. So it's asking us, oh, the sideways one. Ah. Right. Should we get onto that then? Okay then. So what you just saw down the side there when you swipe from the side, it reveals what's known as charms. <laughs> now, these charms allow you, to, allow you to do stuff like searching, sharing, printing, projecting, or configuring your personal settings. That's right. So let's get rid of uh, this, this weather application. And yep. what you do is you go from the top and just drag it and throw it down the bottom. Oh, that's okay. very, very simple and sweet. Mm. So we can bring back that uh, charms menu. Yeah. What do we want to look at? Let's change the settings. Actually, you can personalize your background for your Metro. So let's go into settings there okay, and um, show them how to personalize. Okay, personalize here. Yeah. All let's right. Change the background. Okay, so we've got a, a few pictures here. Let's, uh, let's do this one. Ooh. All right, there you go. And as you can see, you can change the background. You can change the colors. Yeah, yep. a few of them. Oh, that one's nice. That's kind of interesting. It's very All right, we'll go with that. So I just hit back. Yep. And uh, we can put this away. And, yep. Right. And there's your personalized desktop. So you're, it gives you some flexibility. Now, let's say you wanted to get to the actual desktop like what you saw in Windows 7. You can do that. There's a desktop tile on the yep. bottom left. So this bottom left one here. Yep. You tap that. And there you go. And you something looking a bit more like the original yep. uh, Windows. That's However, cool. it still doesn't have a start menu. So if you hit where the start would have been, it actually just takes you back there. So it flips you back and forth. Yeah. So it, in order to get to those usual things, you do that right hand swipe again. Yeah. And uh, the search is pretty much the same as the run command. Yeah. So um, 
What do we want to search for? Well, you just start typing. So let's type in Paris, for example. Now what it will do is it will start searching your computer and the internet as well. So it will give you all kinds of things about Paris. <laughs> it's found some interesting suggested results here. <laughs> Oh, interesting. That is <laughs> that is very interesting indeed. Okay. Never know what it's going to turn up in a search. That's right. <laughs> so we'll put that one away. Yeah. Cool. All right. What else we got? Um, we can um, show you how. Let's show people how to change a tile. Okay. So we'll go back to that um, Metro desktop start screen. Yeah. Now Here just tap and hold any tile you'd like. Okay. So we'll go to this. Uh, let's go to this. Moving one here. Yep. Okay, and then personalize. Oh, I see down the bottom. Yep. So we want to make it bigger. Yep. Resize. Uh, we'll make it large. Make see, it and it gives you that flexibility to make it large. So you can make it bigger, smaller. You can change the color of the tiles. You can do all sorts of things that makes it a little bit more personalized to you. And it's as you can see, it was using all touch gestures. We never used the mouse once. That's right. Well, there is no mouse. <laughs> okay. So now let's go back to the desktop for a second. Uh, the traditional one? Yep. Okay. Okay, now um, here we can show you how to personalize a desktop. So let's um, pull out the settings. Oh, so same sort of thing again. Yeah. This settings. gives you a little bit more, yeah, and then personalize. Yeah, this gives you a little bit more of your traditional themes that we used to have in Windows 7 when we did that show about how to personalize your, your desktop. So once again, you can choose a theme here, any background you want. Mm -hmm. Totally and flowers. Yeah. And Mine make things. it work. And then when we go back to the desktop, you'll see that it's changed. Okay. We'll just double tap that one. I think you just go down. Yeah, we just close it. Yep. There oh, it it's is. Done. <laughs> and the background has changed. So it still allows you to do lots of personalization with your desktop and um, lets you change things around and change things up. And that's basically what you want to do to make your tablet yours. Yeah, let's look at the browser difference. So this is your traditional browser. We can move it around, we can flick it up and full screen it, but it's your traditional way. You can snap it to the side, can't you? What's that? So if you wanted to, just like oh, yes. snap apps, so if we move it to the app. side and then you can open another app side by side. That's right. As we've shown you before. So it's just basically grabbing it, pulling it to the side and it will tap. And then if you pull it to the top, it will go full screen. Hmm. So. The pinching to zoom in around is really good for the internet yeah. on these smaller devices. Um, but then this is the traditional one. If we went close that and went back to here, we can see uh, Internet Explorer. It's more the cloud version. Yeah. See so, yeah, how it's a bit more optimized for touch screens. It uses all of the screen real estate. Yep. Rather than having borders and so forth, and you know makes it there. See so, yeah, everything's cool. Looks great. Mm. If you need to get the URL bar, you can just swipe up from the bottom. Okay. All right, so now we want to look at adding applications to this screen. Yep. Okay, so it's a little hard to see, so we might change... That background. Yeah, that back to something Sorry. like that. Ah, oh, yeah, there you go. And we've got this little... Down arrow. Yes. So if we hit, hit that, that... Ah, and there's all our applications. Yes. Right, so and as you can all... see, there's quite a lot of them. Yeah, now let's say that we wanted to pin one to the start bar. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we'll go to say end, uh, OneNote here. Yep, so you pretty press good. And hold. So we'll hold that and we get these options. Yep. Oh, it's already pinned there, so we would choose to unpin, so maybe I'll pick another one. Um, oh, well, we unpin that. And then uh, if we go back up, yep. it's, uh, it's gone. Oh. It was just there. Yep. Right. So we can go back down to our applications, back to OneNote, pin to start and there it comes up really good now let's say that you don't really like the metro interface and you want it instead of booting into the metro start screen you want to boot into your normal desktop this one that yeah like that yep so how would we do that you hold the uh taskbar down the bottom taskbar here until it pops up and says properties yep properties. hit that properties down there right and you go into um navigation navigation yeah Right, and then go go to desktop. See how it says go. It says um. Uh, go to the desktop and says start the top one. That's fine. Yeah, so you, so just you hit that. Back. Right, and you hit OK, and then what happens is when it reboots next time, instead of going into that Metro interface, it will go directly into your desktop that you might be used to from Windows Seven or XP or whatever you like. So just a personal preference. Yeah. 
And I think you can pin one of the tiles. I think you're allowed to pin any of those apps that you use most down in the taskbar as well. Yeah, you can. Yeah. Which is fantastic. And you've got your Windows Explorer here, which shows you all of your normal, what you would normally have for your Windows Explorer. So this is the conventional one. They put this back in there because people pretty much demanded it. Yeah. Uh, they, you know, didn't want to change quite so Well, that learning curve rapidly. is a bit too steep for a few people. <laughs> Yeah, I guess so. I mean, I don't mind it. It takes a little bit of time to get used to, but once you've sorted it out the way you like it, it's quite convenient. Yeah. Mm. So that's a couple of the things about Windows 8 that's different to Windows 7 that you'll need to get your head around, um, but it's nothing too spectacularly hard. No. And uh, I think you'll find that it is intuitive, as you said, and then you've got all your apps there and you can go and see everything you want. Yeah, so it's like a sport application here. You can see all the touchscreen ones, though. You know, they're very good. Uh, they don't have borders everywhere. Yeah. So that's uh, Windows 8. A couple Windows of little changes in the look and feel. Yeah. And uh, this is the Microsoft Surface, which we have a little keyboard on here. and It's quite a nice little device. Looks pretty good to me. Yeah. Okay, any questions, uh, please let us know. Yeah, and we'll try to get back to you with any help that we can give. Thanks very much. The tablet notebook... Uh, computer that we're looking at today is a Microsoft Surface. This is it. It's quite small. It's a, a Pro 2. Uh, there's a new one coming out pretty soon. And it folds up into a nice um, little device here. It's got a keyboard that comes with it that just sort of attaches magnetically there and you know, just put it back together if you want. If you take the whole thing out of the case, It's basically that. So that's the computer. It's quite a small little tablet. There's so many different kinds of these things around, but I do find this one quite well made and it'll stand up like that. If, like a little picture frame if you need. Well, that's the surface. <laughs>
So there you go, it's that simple to use a QR code. So when you see these little things laying around, then you know that these are actually useful and that they point to something worthwhile. Okay. Okay, so for indispensables today is uh, another security related one. Um, maybe not entirely an indispensable, but it's certainly interesting to have a look well, at. It's indispensable for techies. It's yeah. definitely indispensable for IT pros. It's very good. Yeah. And it's a site called map.ipviking.com. Tell me about it. Well, what it does is it renders a, uh, a picture of the globe showing all the countries and in real time demonstrates uh, all of the ICT attacks that are going on right now around right. the world. So they use a, uh, it's a company called Norse that runs it and uh, they use a, a large amount of what are called honey pots. Yeah. So honey pots in IT are a thing that has been designed to lure an attacker. It looks like an attractive thing to an attack so it'll mimic Microsoft services or email services or something like that. They put these around I think uh, Norse said they capture about 19 terabytes a day. That's so huge! It's a massive uh, amount of traffic. And then they render it on this uh, real-time map that we can see. Right, and so if I go and um, hover over some of the countries, like, let's say United States here, then it shows you, as you can see, all the attacks that are coming in in real time to the US right now right this minute yeah i mean we've been this just keeps clocking up the longer you run the browser session we've been running it for a couple of minutes and yeah. as you can see the united states over every other country in the world <laughs> is uh really does cop the attacks yeah and most of it seems to be coming from china although uh, a lot of attacks are also originating out of the in US. the united states yeah. itself so look, a little under half there so it's a really interesting thing to look at and it down uh, on the bottom right here the attack types it shows you uh, the particular ports and services that are uh, being targeted. So domains, that's your web browsers. Telnet, really? Is people still using Telnet? Oh, of course, Telnet's extremely. Um, web servers, SNMP, which is simple network, network management, management protocol. That's right. SNMP, SNMP is what uh, you use to monitor your switches and routers and so forth, the devices themselves. Yeah. And then there's NTP, Microsoft DS. So they're all using they're utilizing different surface attack surfaces in order to get as much uh, damage, I guess, as they possibly can. But I just love the visual interface like this, so you can actually see it looks like a war uh, because it's actually a war. It is actually a war. <laughs> like we're, like, the world is in a state of cyber war. Cyber warfare. Like no one's declared any war against anyone else, but this war is ongoing. Mm. <laughs> and I think it looks it. amazing because you can see the size of the hits as well, which is crazy, and the different colours. It's, it's excellent. It's a really, really, really good visual reference on how it looks. And if you wanted to know why IT people get so stressed all the time, <laughs> especially if good, they work in security. Yeah, this is a good reason right here. Yeah. I think it's excellent. So what's that called, IP Viking? It's called map.ipviking.com. Right, so uh, so we'll put that up. Similar, but yeah, we'll put up the, the yeah, link, the for, link, that link for that. Have a look and see the sort of very sci-fi nature crazy. of things today. America is definitely the attack target of the world. It all seems to be going on between mostly China, China and America. China and America. Yeah. It's just like crazy. Look at the United States. Whenever I hover over it, then you can get a real indication on how big. See, look there. There you go. There you go. That's just massive. Massive. Continuous, continuous. So how come these ones are a bit thicker than the rest? Uh, I guess it would uh, depend on their you know, frequency or um, if it's something like a DOS attack. A DOS attack, attack yeah. A denial of service is, is how, how much it's ramped up. Yeah, and remember we talked to you about how they turn uh, infected computers into zombie computers and then they can gather together as big, as big a... a um, tribe of zombie computers as they possibly can and they send these massive attacks and that's how it becomes so big that's right they call it a botnet yeah a botnet botnet yeah and we've discussed that before in our security special so if you wanted to see what we were talking about visually well this is what we we're talking this about this is a pretty good one look australia's got six yeah <laughs> little australia <laughs> like the us has got 600 and australia's got six yeah. <laughs> That's if, fantastic. Yeah. Attack origins, 322 US, 217 China, I've got. Yeah. Yours is a little uh, little different, but it uh, clearly shows the, uh, the leaders in this. Wow. And it's just continuous and it's never ending and it's ongoing. And that's why IT security is so important. 
So that's our indispensable. It's a bit techy, but it does have a beautiful, beautiful visual representation, and that's why we thought that you might gain something from it from having a look. That's right. Okay. Yep. Any questions, please let us know. Yep. <laughs>